So as I'm looking at this, I grabbed out of the wrong stack of rough cut lumber. This is not my white oak stack of lumber. This was my red oak stack of lumber, which it doesn't matter. It's the only stack of scrap lumber I had that's big enough. There may be some white oak mixed in there. We'll find out in a minute. But uh, this is definitely red oak right here. Been putting something off for a long time. Today I'm going to be working on the frame for a workbench. This workbench will serve two purposes. It's going to serve the purpose of being a storage area to keep my tools under, and the second is to be able to actually function and work doing the cabinetry that I need to do to remodel these old boats. So I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna kind of talk you through what my idea is. This is by no means the best workbench out there. But if you wanna do one, hey, I'll upload when I'm complete a measured diagram. Now for a workbench, it's what you find as a comfortable work height. Now you'll notice all of these saws are at the same height. So a taller person will have to actually bend over to work on the saw. For me it would be better, you see where my knuckles are closed at? For me it would be better if it was just a little taller. Not much, maybe an inch or so. Because when I stand up straight, my knuckles don't touch it. Your knuckles should bump it. And what that does is that gives you the ability to where when your hand is bent and you're pushing a piece of wood, you'll notice that there's nothing between you and the wood. You want to be able to stand straight for the simple reason when you're pushing, you're going to slightly bend over. Now, if you're already bent over to get down to the wood to start pushing, you're uncomfortably bent over and you're going to be off balance. Okay, enough with that. Let's get over here and do some setup. Now we're going to set up to do some ripping. And what you want to do is you want to get your saw set so that you're just above what you're ripping. And what that does is it takes less of the saw blade out of the wood. Now this is white oak, so it's going to be one of the most difficult woods to cut with your table saw that you're probably ever going to put in this. So you'll set your fence to the width that you want it to rip and you want to be sure that you measure this with nothing pushing against it. Because if you push against your blade, well there's 16 inches that I'm pushing that blade toward the outside of the table away from the fence. So that's going to make my cut 16th of an inch wider. I did say 16th of an inch the first time and not 16 inches. I don't know. But same as with this, you don't want to hook your tape measure over and pull at it. You just want to lay the tape measure across it. And what I always do to get my measurement is I'll butt the tape measure against the guard. And then I'll come over and read my tape measure there. So basically what I'm looking at is if I come from this guide here and measure over, now you'll notice my numbers are upside down because I'm reading from this square edge over. 
you'll see that the inside of my cutting edge is the one that I'm measuring to, which is three and a quarter. And what I do is I go ahead and give it three and about a 30 second more past that, or sometimes even a 16th. And the reason I do that is I would rather have a little bit to sand away if I'm doing something precise in a, in a piece than have it too short. You can always take a little off, but you can never add any to it. Now, I'm not going to be as worried about this being a workbench table. This is going to be a rough lumber cobbled together. No joking. It's just going to be a rough mess, and it's going to be very functional and it should last until my son is my age or longer. So, made my pass through, cut my board off so that we've taken it down to the size that I want the band of the tabletop to be. Now, there's going to be one other thing that we do here. I'm going to come in the bottom of this with a small notch and then I'm going to run a strip. This is going to be cut into two foot sections and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it so that it's two foot plus this thickness plus a little bit more because I'm going to put holes through these legs so that the sides, whenever they come up, they'll stick through just like this. I want to build this table. This table is going to be able to be disassembled, stacked flat, and taken anywhere, knocked back together, reassembled really quick. And I lost connection right whenever I was started to cut. The camera turned off. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> maybe it was the power surge in the, in the building, but I doubt that. I, I think it was mainly because of the big fan over here to the left, well, actually to your right of the screen, it kicked on and started to mess it up. So now we're going to move over here to the uh, chop saw, and we're going to get everything down to length.
25 and 7 eighths. That gives me my two sides. More red oak. It's hard to tell once it's weathered. So as I'm looking at this, I grabbed out of the wrong stack of rough cut lumber. This is not my white oak stack of lumber. This was my red oak stack of lumber which it doesn't matter. It's the only stack of scrap lumber I had that's big enough. There may be some white oak mixed in there. We'll find out in a minute. But uh, this is definitely red oak right here. So this will make a lighter colored workbench. It'll still be nice and strong. And I've got a solid piece of white oak that's gonna be the main center worktop surface of the bench. Maybe it's maybe it's white oak. Somebody's been going through my lumber pile. Wasn't me. But it's no complaint. This is stuff that's just been set around for 20 years, air drying, so it's ready to be used. And some of it come out of some old houses I remodeled. I had a little change of heart and I decided to take everything to a five inch wide board and that's going to make everything work out a lot easier because these boards are one inch and five sixteenths thick. This is going to be my band that goes around the top of the workbench. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to step in on this a little bit so that my tabletop will have a place to lay in. And I went ahead and done the factory edge, or well not factory edge, but I did a, a saw cut straight edge on both sides, seeing how these are red oak. And uh, I went back up and looked at my white oak pile, and I only have one board in my white oak pile, and it's only about this long. Now this would not make a good work table. And I want to work bench top that's going to give me room to put at least an eight foot board on it uh, and balance it out. And then if I need to go for any of the 12 foot long boards that I need to work on, I can uh, simply add a, uh, a feed tray to the end and have something to brace it up on and move it around and I need a good, solid, sturdy station because I'm going to be doing a lot of, a lot of hand planning. It'd be nice if somebody left a treasure map for me to go find a hundred-year-old set of tools. Those old wood working tools that were hand tools would be far superior to almost any of the machines you can get to this day. 
But just saying that, I wonder what kind of pirate would be going after a treasure chest full of tools. Would that be the kind of treasure a pirate would really have? But wait, a sailor would have a desire for tools? Just imagine a treasure chest that a old salty dog hid so no one could steal the most valuable treasure he had. No, not his sword, not his old rusty boarding sword, or his gold medallion from cursed treasure. No, that's not the most valuable thing at all. No, not even his hat. It would be the tools to build and fix the ship. Because if you're not afloat, you can't be a pirate, can you? But there's no such chest. Nowhere to be found. No hundred-year-old chest is going to be found anywhere full of tools for turning ordinary chunks of wood into beautiful interiors. Molding planes, rounding planes, rebate planes, Imagine the hands that have touched them, the things that they've brought to life, from ordinary, renewable sources, the wood, the slicks, the old. Multi-use battle axe, or the broad axe when you're hewing timbers. Hmm. The magical bubble levels, you know, those kind of tools. Just imagine those old wood working tools that were hand tools would be far superior to almost any of the machines you can get to this day. It just takes you a little longer. Now, if you're in a hurry, then by all means, you don't need to be working on old boats. You need to just go to the store, and jerk out the wallet, press, throw down the card, and make the purchase, or write the check, and write it right out of your banking account. Okay, so I'm gonna get all of these down to the five inch, then uh, that'll give me my wrap around the band. Now this is the sides. This is both sides. How is this both sides? Quite simple. Yeah, cut it. <laughs> and with that, that's the end of this part of this video. So like, subscribe, follow, share it with your friends on your social media. Leave a comment down below. Hey, keep them kind. And with that, that is a cut.